Interested parties is the Senate Environmental and Natural Resource Finance Committee called to order Tuesday, April 25th. Excuse me. Wow, I'm putting that ahead. Uh, Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. Uh, welcome, members, again to the uh, hearing. We have one bill today. Uh, it is the, the annual LCCMR bill, uh, Environmental Natural Resource Trust Fund Appropriation Extensions. And with us today, uh, the author of the bill, Senate File 4043, Senator Westrom. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, members. Uh, make sure you can hear me well enough. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there is an amendment to the bill, and maybe I'll just set it up by explaining uh, the process here, and then maybe we want to move the amendment and have uh, uh, staff help walk through uh, the amendment. I guess you tell me how much uh, specificity you would care for. Uh, I think our staff would be uh, ready to uh, walk through I, I some think projects. We, I think, uh, Senator, we can go ahead and move the amendment. It's an author's amendment. To okay. The amendment. And then it would be on the bill. That's, and the, so, A, that's the A2 amendment. And, and Mr. Chair, members, the, the bill in front of us is a uh, an extension language bill for some projects that uh, uh, with COVID and some delays uh, needed, needed uh, language. Uh, that is the vehicle uh, we've uh, talked with uh, the house on and we have a common vehicle this way uh, for the LCCMR bills to match up. So that's the bill that would be adding the amendment to Mr. Chair. Okay. Senator Icorn moves the A2 amendment. Members all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. <laughs> Senator Westrom, your bill is in order, I believe. So Mr. Chair, uh, members, uh, this is the annual LCCMR bill, the uh, allocation of the funds from the tr uh, Environmental Trust Fund. 5% of that Environmental Trust Fund gets uh, is dedicated and allocated to uh, projects that protect, uh, improve, enhance air, water, uh, and natural resources or wildlife across Minnesota as passed in the 1988 uh, referendum the, that brought us the lottery. Uh, so these funds need to be allocated or ratified by the legislature. We have a, a commission LCCMR that uh, meets to review and winnow down the, the numerous projects that apply for grants uh, or other uh, application for uh, these dollars uh, to uh, bring some recommendations back to the legislature. Uh, the LCCMR group, uh, the commission, which is made up of 17, uh, does have uh, works to try to find consensus on recommendations and, and uh, in order to bring a recommendation uh, needs to have 12 or more of the members uh, approve a recommendation. Uh, that was not achieved last year. There were uh, different uh, mixtures of projects uh, that, that had majority votes, but not, not the, the, the 12 or uh, I think that's three fifths or three fourths, I'm not sure. The higher threshold, two thirds, I guess it would be um, members. And so uh, this bill is a uh, largely the compilation of the proposals that passed or had the higher rankings of the least half or about half or more of the members as we've evaluated them. Uh, some of the projects uh, were more uh, uh, of interest to some members than others and others and vice versa. And so uh, uh, we are working to put together a package that addresses a lot of environmental needs or projects that, that have been brought forward uh, through the commission process some others that have come about since uh, some of them are very familiar projects that have went through the LCCMR before uh, and, and it would be additionally uh, funded under this bill. For example, Forever Green is a, a project through the University of Minnesota that has worked with cover crops and uh, received prior LCCMR funding. They have brought in a fairly large request to the legislature uh, consistent with what the LCCMR funds that is a project in this bill uh, to, to help advance some of those uh, cover crops. 
uh, some other projects that would uh, be in incentives, voluntary that other agriculture groups, for example, consistent with cover crops have brought uh, to the legislature also matches with similar uh, uh, efforts and uh, the focus of the LCCMR and the uh, Environmental Trust Fund to protect, improve, enhance our natural resources, air, water, and land and across Minnesota. And so members, uh, this uh, spends those dollars and uh, uh, prioritizes the projects that we have uh, seen as a commission with some other areas that we are that are consistent with what the LCCMR dollars were dedicated for and uh, are allowed to uh, allocate to improve, enhance, protect our environment. And so uh, members with that, Mr. Chair, I think if it would be, uh, if, if you would desire, I think uh, one of our Senate Council could walk through the projects uh, uh, or, or categorize them if, if depending upon how, how you'd like to proceed. Thank you, uh, Senator Westrom. And before we proceed, uh, I just wanna make it known that we do have a quorum present. Um, Mr. Mueller, if you'd go through the spreadsheet, is that your intention? Um, yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, before Mr. Mueller starts. Senator Clarsway, I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mueller, if you would be so kind, I would like to, uh, I know you go very quickly to this and I haven't seen it. So if you could slow down a little bit, number one, and if you could give us um, in each item, uh, the bill number or, or the bill and the author and the region. I, I would like to kind of map it if you can, uh, just kind of give us a sense of, you know, is this a statewide project? Is this regional and, and the, the number so that I can track down kind of a map if that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Thank you. I think uh, I think staff can do that yeah. at least within reason. Yeah. And Mr. Chair, Senator, Senator, Mr. Westbrook. Chair, and Senator uh, Torres Ray, uh, when you said bill number, I just want to clarify uh, this. Most most every project in here, or nearly every project in here, wouldn't be necessarily a separate bill number, uh, but there might be a few. And I so I, I didn't want to put Mr. Mueller in a spot where he's he's got to find something that's not not existing because most of these are projects that the LCCMR have, have received applications for and we've applied and uh, but I just, is that is that what you meant I, I just want to clarify so he's not in a quandary. Senator Torres I think if I can for you I think what you're what you're interested in is in the, in the geographic area because all of these are in this particular bill they didn't come by a way of bill form as Senator Westrom said, there may be a couple that have, but uh, staff can certainly come up with the geographic areas. For you. Uh, thank you, Senator Westrom, and yeah. thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, mostly I'm interested, you know, kind of in the region. Sure. Uh, so thank you for the clarification. I yep. appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. So, Mr. Mr. Chair. Senator Dibble. I think uh, Senator Torres Ray <clears throat> might have been talking about there's 17 under emerging issues that we recognize coming from other initiatives we've seen in bill form. So that might be where we can kind of keep track of those. Thanks. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mueller. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, first I'll just briefly describe how the, the spreadsheet is structured. And then um, the, the newer projects that were not in the original LCCMR proposals, I'll walk through the bill and mention what bill numbers those come from. But the way this spreadsheet is structured, um, it lists the subdivision reference and where there's a blank, that means that item is not in this bill. It lists the project title. Senate file 4036, this is the proposed, this was the bill that Senator Westrom introduced. And this was the bill that received a majority vote from the LCCMR, but not the super majority. The next column over is what this DE amendment is. So it shows the projects, and if there's a zero there, that means that that project is not in this DE amendment. And some projects have been, um, have a recommendation for a lower amount. And so that change from intro, that last column shows either if the project is um, reduced, increased, or not in the bill. 
So that's the structure of the spreadsheet. The new, the projects that were not part of the LCCMR recommendations start on page six of the spreadsheet under subdivision 10 emerging issues. And they're listed there. And when I go through the, the actual bill language, I'll mention the, the Senate file that some of them don't, all of them don't come from a specific Senate file, but some of them do. And I'll mention that those numbers when I go through the bill. So that's just the way that the spreadsheet is structured. The DE amendment spends $70.881 million just as the, from the same dollar amount that the LCCMR recommended. Um, and I'll just note here, the emerging issues account the, is at 244,000. That's sort of the, the bottom line um, no, money that's left over compared to the 384 that was uh, originally introduced. Um, but I'll start going through the, the bill. I'm not gonna go through the projects in the first um, nine subdivisions because those have all went through the um, LCCMR, LCCMR process. And I'll start on, it's page 23, um, line 14 is where the emergency, emerging issues um, start. The first project here is aggregate resource mapping. Um, this is actually a proposal that's in the governor's budget uh, through DNR. And this has been previously funded uh, by the LCCMR, um, I believe in fiscal year 2020. So it's 500,000 for that. The leaded gasoline contamination analysis. This is from Senate file 2930, Senator Howe. And this would be a pay for a study for uh, three cities to study the, uh, the contamination of petroleum in the groundwater. The next item, page uh, 24, line 10, Living Snow Fence Program. That is from Senate file 2653, Senator Senjum. Um, this was one of the items that was in that bill. There was a couple other items from that bill that are not part of this proposal, but this was one of the items. Um, the next item, forest data inventory. This is from Senate file 4139, Senator Eichhorn. And this is to, focusing on the data enhancement um, of county and private lands, county and private forest lands. Um, the next one, uh, $1 million for um, conservation reserve incentives. This is from Senate file 3020, Senator Ingebrigtsen. The next one on line 25.18 for uh, ditch improvements and control of water levels, Senate file 2579, Senator Newman. The next one on line 2525, pipeline conservation program. This is from Senate file 2954, Senator Coleman. The next one on line 26.9, a groundwater storage recovery database. Uh, this is from Senate file 3113, Senator Weber. And the new amount 421 is based on the fiscal note, that bill. Um, next one, 26.16, replacement of drought killed seedlings. This was an item that was in the governor's budget. The governor had requested 5.5 uh, million for this. And um, I believe Senator Ingebrigtsen also was carrying this in a bill for drought relief. The next one is on line 26.27. Uh, ring levies is from Senate file 2798, Senator Westrom. The next one replacing failing septic systems. Um, this was funded in last year's budget bill to um, Board of Water and Soil Resources at a level of $1.4 million in the budget bill. So this would be an addition amount on top of that 1.4 that was part of last year's budget bill. Um, the Healthy Soils Best Management Program on line 27.20 is from Senate file 3737, Senator Weber. And there is also some similar proposals in the governor's budget for healthy soils programs. Um, next one is Forever Green. This was mentioned by uh, Senator Westrom. Um, this is from Senate file 3711, Senator Dames. This has also been funded previously 
um, through various sources, including legacy funds. Um, the next one is the Pig's Eye Landfill Task Force. This is from Senate File 3359, Senator Herr. The next one on page 29, line 11, the Aquaculture Plan. This is from Senate File 2235, Senator Goggin. The next one is 29.22, Noxious Weed Prevention Grants. This was in the, this was part of the governor's uh, budget request for the Department of Ag. The next one is developing the markets for cover crops. This is from Senate File 3271, Senator Westrom. The next one, um, the demonstration project for using bioethanol in diesel engines. This was not in a, a Senate bill, but it was a proposal that would a grant to perform in-state demonstration for at least two vehicles that had converted to diesel engines and to quantify the greenhouse gas emissions and pollutions. So this is something that was not in the Senate bill. The next one is line 30.19, veterinary disease testing for wild cervidae, the for lab equipment at the U University of Minnesota. This is from Senate, a modified version of Senate file 2937. And then the last one here is the merge, merging issues accounts. Again, I said there's 244,000 left in that. On line 30.32, with some language saying that work plans are not required for the projects that are in this subdivision. And then the rest of the bill is pretty much this, the language that passed the LCCMR, including most, most of this is boilerplate language. All the extensions on page 40 were all approved by the LCCMR. And the one last item is section three, which is on the last page of the bill, it deals with the sale of a certain parcel of land in the city of Buell. And I'm gonna turn this one over to Mr. Stanley. Mr. Stanley, and after you're done, we'll open it up for questions. Mr. Chair, members, good morning. Um, section three on the last page of the DE deals with a somewhat uh, unique situation involving a grant that was made over 35 years ago uh, to the city of Buell. Um, and what happened here is the city received a grant of $75,000 in 1987 to improve some uh, outdoor recreation land, some land for outdoor recreation purposes. This predates the uh, Environment and Natural Resource Trust Fund. It predates the LCCMR. It was done under the predecessor to the LCCMR, the LCMR. I think I'm saying that right. Um, so what, as best I can describe it, what happened is the grant was to improve, as I said, for outdoor recreation purposes, some land in the city and in the grant agreement that was initially between the Department of Energy and Economic Development and the city of Buell, later assigned to the DNR. Uh, the area that was to be improved was described as an 80 acre parcel in the city that was far larger than the area that actually was improved with the grant money. And so uh, what happened subsequently was the city wanted to uh, sell for development of single family housing a portion of the land that was not in fact improved with the grant money, but that was in the area, the 80 acres described by the grant agreement. And so what has happened is there is a disagreement about whether or not converting that land to private development violates the grant agreement under the terms of that 1987 agreement. And I forgot to mention, uh, Mr. Chair, at the beginning that this is uh, from Senate File 4022, which is a Senator Thomasoni bill. So the, the text that you see before you on page 42 would attempt to clean up that situation by removing any ambiguity about whether or not the city could do what they're proposing to do uh, with this land. Question, Senator Devil. I'm sorry. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't know if Mr. Stanley can answer this question. Was the grant 
that the city received used to acquire the, the land or was the grant simply to do the improvements for recreational purposes? Mr. Chair, members, the document that I have seen uh, says that it was used to improve the land. And the, 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 I can read you a little bit here. It says, city of Buell has converted, this is what was alleged. The city of Buell's converted land improved by a grant. And, and members and Thank Senator, there, there is somebody from the city of Buell if you have questions. They can certainly testify. Mr. Chair, yeah, I perhaps okay. would like to ask that question of the representative from Buell. Thanks. Very good. The representative. Mr. From, please identify Mr. Chair, yourself. Welcome to the committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Ryan Pervenanzi. It says John Clarich, our mayor, on my screen. Not sure how to change that. So my name is Ryan Pervenanzi. Senator Dibble, to answer your question, no, the grant funds were not used to acquire any of the land used for that for that grant. That land was required by the city from U.S. Steel back in the early 80s. Senator Dibble. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, in that case, I would be comfortable with this language, I think is fine. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions of the testifier? Mr. Chair. Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, while the gentleman from Buell is here and to Senator Dibble's question, uh, this was brought to, to me as we uh, were putting this together. Senator Dibble and uh, Senator Thomas only had the legislation, uh, but my understanding was the improvement was a trail, which would still be all in existence. Uh, just the, the description of the parcel of land was seemingly bigger than what the improvement was going to be. So if, if you feel it would be helpful, uh, maybe the gentleman from Buell, Mr. Chair, could just quickly identify that the is it a trail or what was the improvements made to this area, which seems like this uh, ultimately would would augment that the use of that that uh, improvement and lastly uh, i know mr meyer is also here from the dnr uh, they're committed to working this out and figuring it out and and we felt this is probably the best legislative solution to give clarity uh, knowing that maybe there's some tweaking that might still need to happen as we move through the process but mr chair if the mr if the gentleman from buell would want to just comment briefly on the improvement, I think that would just help uh, everybody have a similar knowledge base that I've, I've been told. The uh, gentleman from uh, Buell, and, I've, and I forgot your name, I, I have you down as mayor here, but is it Mr. Uh, Reverence? Pervenanzi, it's, it's a mouthful. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, please, go ahead. But thank you, Senator. Um, the area that was improved um, with the grants included um, some trails, fishing piers, a beach area, all located on one side of the pit. The area that was developed by the city for residential purposes on is on the opposite side of the pit and was never used as a formal recreation area by the city or no grant funds were, you know, affected in the area that the housing was developed. So we're not, we're not taking anything away that we use grant funds for. And I hope that answers your question. Very good. Senator Dibble. Thank you, that helps. Um, I see Mr. Meyer kind of drifting forward to the testifier's table. Looks like he has some knowledge that he'd like to share. Mr. Meyer, welcome to the committee. Mr. Chairman, members, thank you for the record. Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, of the Department of Natural Resources. And first of all, I need to apologize to the city of Buell for a response letter that was supposed to be sent to them about four weeks ago, which they'll be receiving shortly on, on this issue. And Mr. Stanley did a good job of describing the situation at hand. This is a 35-year-old grant that we inherited from DEED back when they were doing grant work for LCMR, which was funded off of, I believe, the Future Resources Fund, actually. Um, cigarette taxes and things like that that we used to get into the account. Uh, the issue is that these lands were identified in the grant agreement as matching private lands. Um, we want to resolve the issue without creating a precedent on these grant agreements and, and making sure that it's done the right way. Hopefully identify some alternative lands that we can amend to the grant agreement or something like that. 
but we do want to work with the city and the legislature to find a solution that that resolves the issue at hand for the city of Buell, but as I said, does not create problems for us in the future. As some of these grants that are still there, we may have problems like this coming to us in the future as we're reviewing these files. Okay. No other questions? Also with us today uh, is uh, Director Nash, too, for questions. Uh, Becker Nash. Um, members, any... Uh, any further discussion, Senator Dibble? Um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so I was uh, looking, this is a question for Senator Westrom. I was looking at the LCCMR report and I see all the various, all these columns. It looks like they represent different members packages or ideas uh, for, for projects. And I think Senator Westrom um, had proposed funding, and, and as I look at the projects, funding all the projects um, that got a ranking of 60 points or higher. Um, but I, I, I just haven't had the opportunity to track that back to the A2 amendment. Um, and I'm wondering if, if those two track or if they're different from each other. Mr. Mr. Senator Western. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Dibble, um, the, the proposal starts with projects that received a 49% uh, or higher. So basically half, half commission support uh, or not versus uh, the, the, the uh, house bill is a higher threshold uh, with, uh, I believe it's about 60 or 65% and higher. Um, there were several projects in the 50s that uh, range from parks in the Twin Cities to uh, improving a couple a campground site in northern Minnesota to um, other similar types of environmental or outdoor improvements. And so that's 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 just one of the, the main differences. Um, the 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 49 and higher received a majority vote on the commission, but it didn't receive the super majority vote, which there was never a, a final proposal come that came to agreement. So um, the commission did a lot of work to kind of sort out uh, the lower projects uh, below 49, just, just were not, not included in either bill. If that helps. And, and, and generally maybe one more, aspect it for your helpful and uh, help and consideration uh, the projects uh, that were receiving the lower threshold the commission had uh, come up with kind of a percentage of a reduction of those projects uh, so the funding would have wouldn't have been as great on those in the range of the 50s and low 60s where some of the projects towards the top the commission had uh, largely or generally had consensus or more consensus on uh, funding some of the higher ranked projects closer to their to their fuller um, fuller uh, level of support uh, with with some so so that that's the other aspect you'll kind of see in there Senator Torsby. Thank you uh, Mr. Chairman um, Senator Westrom, I, I am trying to, to kind of get a sense of, of your criteria for funding for this particular bill. Um, so, so, so there's a criteria that changes kind of the LCCMR scoring process, meaning that you went lower than 50, right? Um, and, and so there was a selection of projects that had a lower score. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about Kind of your view and your vision for that. So, so that's one question. But the second question that I'm more interested in is these 20 projects that create a new system of funding for this um, fund, which are called emerging issues. So you have 20, if I counted this correctly, 19 or 20 uh, projects that um, were authored by majority members, of course, that are included. And, and is, is that a kind of a new category 
uh, could, could you explain your criteria for funding these projects out of the LCCMR? And is, is this a, additional with, with in consultation with the LCCMR or just your own direction? Could you explain how that process worked? So, so Mr. Chair and Senator uh, Western, maybe, maybe Mr. Mueller could come join me at the table because I might have a few questions on it if, if that would work, but, or uh, Mr. Stanley, whoever they think would be more helpful if we get into more projects. But Senator uh, Torres Ray, uh, the projects that are also in this bill are consistent with what uh, we as the legislature have set up as uh, the intended purpose for the funds and the environmental trust fund. Uh, uh, every year, the LCCMR uh, recommendations uh, have changes made to them uh, by the legislature. The legislature has not ever delegated its uh, decision making to the commission or any group like that. It is just a guidance of sorting through what is otherwise 200 to 300 projects or proposals that come in. Some of them uh, maybe much further afield from what the legislative intent is for the use to improve, enhance the environment uh, or to enjoy the great outdoors. Um, and so that is a winnowing down process. Uh, these other proposals uh, in talking with members, uh, committee staff uh, working on uh, similar legislation, uh, many of them uh, are several, some of them being consistent with exactly what the LCCMR has previously funded, Forever Green, for example. There's been a lot of talk about cover crops uh, with buffer, buffer strips that were passed about six, eight years ago through the legislative process. Uh, there has been a lot of effort to find uh, improving cover crop technologies or practices uh, on vulnerable lands or uh, a wellhead protection or buffer strips or lands just in general that can produce a, a good uh, crop uh, for, for a source of income, for a source of uh, food for uh, humans or consumption. Uh, but, but some of that needs to also be developed. And that's when many of the cover crop efforts, the Forever Green Initiative, for example, is a request of about $20 million. Um, if they got everything they wanted, but they have been funded previously in the LCCMR, for example. There's a couple off, off uh, offsets of that similar effort of cover crops, uh, one by Senator Weber, uh, Senator Dames, uh, and I know Senator Dibble has carried the Forever Green in the past. Uh, the University of Minnesota has been very active in, in developing these improved grains that are perennial, uh, do not have to be uh, tilled every year, uh, a, a better fit for for some lands and uh, uh, in finding the improved process. So that's that's uh, those those three projects, for example, the Forever Green, the the incentive for cover crops uh, for uh, that several of the ag groups have brought to us as a way to help encourage and teach uh, farmers uh, new new styles of cover crop new grain opportunities. And then the third aspect uh, brought, brought by some of the groups uh, ranging from land stewardship, farmers union, uh, some other uh, niche specialty crop farmers uh, wanting to help develop that market because they as farmers need that market developed and advanced so uh, they can sell a camelina, uh, for example, uh, and, and be able to help have people in the state that can process it to get it to general mills or other uh, buyers that, that would be um, able to fulfill the whole market process. So the what they're growing on their farms in a cover crop friendly way uh, also has a an ability to pay for itself and uh, they can sustain themselves on the farm if they convert some of their land that's maybe a more ripe to runoff or a, a more environmentally sensitive, or uh, they start planting cover crops in the rows with their corn and beans and uh, have a way to, for more weed control, less chemicals, less tillage need, less uh, expense. So these are all harmoniously working together 
as they've uh, brought the proposals through legislation and worked with uh, several of us in the legislature consistent with what Forever Green has started. Uh, there's a lot of uh, energy and en enthusiasm around that type of proposal. Uh, another proposal kind of consistent with that is the one that uh, Mr. Uh, Mueller talked about, uh, the, the, the pilot project here in Minnesota with uh, uh, ethanol being converting diesel semi engines to using ethanol, which is happening in other parts of the country. They need to get the test results and the, the confirmation of what they know can happen. And all of a sudden you've got emissions that are dramatically reduced or uh, lessened from what would be coming out of an otherwise diesel engine semi. Uh, imagine the opportunity of, of uh, cleaning up uh, a diesel engine with running mostly or all ethanol in it instead of diesel and the improved mileage, as well as the emissions, as well as the renewable energy that can now be grown from that corn or other uh, uh, seed crops here, uh, gr grains here in Minnesota that, that can produce that renewable energy that can be burnt now in a diesel engine that doesn't have to be the same diesel that you and I grew up with and know. And now those cover crops are can be implemented among those corn rows that are being harvested for the renewable energy. So I hope that gives you kind of the big picture of how so many of these can fit together for the improvement, enhancement, and protection of our environment. And that's that's what that's where these projects uh, largely have come from, and and have been been consistent with what the LCCMR has funded in the past, what the legislature continues to do as we fund projects to protect, enhance, and improve the environment uh, in our state, as well as getting outdoors and being able to enjoy that great nature through improved campgrounds, through improved uh, 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 use of, of uh, water frontage uh, up on the Rainy River. Uh, these opportunities, because the LCCMR is there, these families can now go to these areas and experience the great outdoors uh, and, and in a style that most people today want in the sense of they don't want to be brushing their own trail and cutting through the thistle patch. They want an ability to take their family, their strollers out on a dock, out on a pier or through a trail through the woods that uh, is consistent but allows people to experience that great outdoors. And so that's that's where these projects have come from. So I know it's a long answer, but I hope that help gives you some of the connection of how all of these work together and uh, are very similar to what has been funded and what the legislature prioritized in the past and continues to prioritize as we uh, finalize an LCCMR funding bill uh, Thank you, each Mr. Year. Chair. Thank you, Senator Western. Well, a follow up follow up. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, uh, Senator Westerman. and I hear your passion. Uh, it's an important conversation. I, I, I think that I, I want to be clear. My, my question is not questioning uh, kind of these fundamental pieces about uh, what these dollars could do. I'm just talking about process, and I would like to get the uh, LCCMR staff, uh, uh, please, because my question is, pretty, is, is more related to process, Senator, not questioning you know, the value of these projects. I think, you know, there is a list that was uh, put together. I, I presume LCCMR has a lot of trouble trying to select these projects because they are all fantastic. And people put all of effort, you know, into bringing partnerships, coalitions that can present amazing projects, just like the ones that Senator Westrom just described. Uh, Minnesota is well known for having, you know, a tremendous, uh, tremendous talent. I think my question is, 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 is perhaps for uh, LCCMR. Is this uh, uh, unprecedented? I think it's unprecedented. I've not been in the legislature long enough, but I've been here long enough to understand. We, we haven't had a category of emerging issues that a legislator, a chair or a, or a committee member, House or Senate say, okay, we're gonna change the way you score. You're gonna do it in this way now. And we're including a new category and bringing in 20 projects that we think 
need to be funded just because they are fun. They are good and they fund good things. Is, is this something that you've done before? Um, I, I think I would like to ask the LCCMR to respond to that question. Director Nash, welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Becca Nash, I'm the director of the LCCMR. Um, Mr. Chair and Senator Torres Ray, the LCCMR, as you know, is a joint commission that makes recommendations to the legislature and our recommendations usually do result from a multi-stage competitive process. So we start out by issuing a request for proposal that reflects our strategic plan and the priorities of the LCCMR. Um, we receive applications um, from people all across the state and then those applications are reviewed and evaluated and vetted, as I said, at multiple stages um, through the process, um, resulting usually in a, in a recommendations bill to the legislature. Um, we do know that the legislature makes the final decisions and that it is up to the legislature to, to do that. Um, and there have been instances in the past where there have been variances from the LCCMR's recommendations and what eventually becomes funded. Um, we have looked back and in, in most cases, um, those changes have resulted from um, new money becoming available after the time that LCCMR did their review. So sometimes we have cancellations of prior projects, projects completing early with money left over. And so we do let legislators know, and oftentimes um, they do decide to allocate um, those funds to projects. I think most often we've seen that they have been allocated to projects that have had some history with the LCCMR, um, have received prior funding, and maybe it's a continuation. Um, but there are at times projects um, added um, by the legislature that are, as, as happens here, through, through bills that have gone through a different process. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Nash, in, in this proposal, what is your opinion about the scoring? I, I'm kind of curious about, th there is a, a conversation going on at the legislature that I appreciate um, and, and have a sensitivity to it uh, that people say, you know, we, we're trying to give an opportunity to projects that had a lower score because they don't have people who write these proposals. You know, they're not the big counties, the big. Uh, so, so they got a lower score, but they're good projects. And so they should be included. I, I kind of have some, some appreciation for that. On the other hand, uh, we're kind of saying, well, we're changing the process, right? So we should come to the legislature and change the statute and say, well, we're gonna give it in a different way, right? Because that's kind of it should be. And could you give me your opinion about kind of your balance? How do you see this new scoring or this new direction coming? How, what is your advice to the legislature with respect to, to the direction we're taking now? Director Nash. Mr. Chair and members, and I should just start out by saying that um, I am nonpartisan staff that serves the legislature. And so I generally am not sharing opinions about bills um, or advocating for a certain um, approach or not. But I can tell you about um, the LCCMARS process and that we do have um, you know, a fairly rigorous process. We have um, evaluation criteria that have been adopted by the LCCMR um, that we as staff apply to proposals when we receive them, that we provide to the members and that the members use in evaluating their, their projects. So um, I think, you know, it's hard to say. We, we do have a process. And I think I, one thing that I could say is that um, it is the legislature's prerogative to make decisions, um, but it does raise questions that we sometimes have a hard time answering um, for the proposers who did work through the process. And when they are removed, you know, there are questions about why. And so those are hard questions for us to answer. And also it's hard for us to answer what is the alternate process. Um, you know, if, if it's not going through the LCCMR, if it's getting added through the legislature, how do I access that process? So these are questions that get asked of us. And Senator, if I could, I'm also a member on there, as you know, uh, I'm a co-chair and, and, and I think, to describe the uh, process is somewhat fluid. Uh, there was testimony and has been, I think over the years of 
uh, projects that uh, maybe can't be done by LCCMR staff. And there might be some of them in here that can't be uh, funded for whatever reason, that money drops to the bottom line and, and it gets appropriated out to other emergent issues, depending upon uh, an agreement, usually sometimes on the fly with the, uh, with the, with the commission or, or they, uh, it drops to the bottom line and it has to come back here. It doesn't go into the general fund. That's one of the unique things about these constitutional amendments is that money has to stay focused on, on, uh, on the environment generally. And uh, so it becomes very, it becomes very fluid. And, and uh, sometimes we have projects that simply, well, they decided they just can't get it done. So the, the money then comes back. So, um, um, and I, and again, I should, I should also mem uh, mention something that, that was uh, discussed during the uh, commission uh, the ending of the meetings was was that more projects would get funded um, um, according to the process uh, if we were to obviously go down lower on the on the average scores and that was I think more more appealing to the majority of the folks uh, and that's why that probably that number was higher than the dissenting vote so um, uh, that's something that appeals to me and Senator, you mentioned that because there are some, some of these agencies that are, uh, uh, that cannot and, and uh, have a time struggling with, with the application process. And, and, uh, um, and if that's the case why they sometimes get, I think, scored a little lower because of that. And, and, uh, but boy, there's been a lot in the last 16 years of the dollars that have gone out to the environment. I keep repeating that have for years the amount of money that we spend on, on in environment as well as research and Senator Western really touched on something interesting here with, with uh, diesel, diesel semi trailers uh, going down the road someday with, uh, uh, with strictly ethanol being fed by ethanol. Uh, it's just, that's amazing technology to me, like similar to electric cars. So um, that's, I guess that's, you know, my part of, explaining why uh, it's not always just cut and dry, but Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think um, it's worth noting that the LCCMR failed to make any recommendations this year for new projects. And I'm curious, we don't have to unpack that here today, but um, that seems like a failure to me um, that um, that they couldn't get to their 12 of 17 threshold to agree to recommend anything to the legislature. So it's entirely left to the legislature to sort out and figure out which projects um, should rise uh, or in which ones should fall and you know and what amounts they should get. Um, this is of course not necessarily um, out of context, I mean, you talked about how the dynamics change and I think we have a long history of sometimes upholding the recommendations of the LCCMR and sometimes substantially amending them and, and some you know, cherry picking or, or defunding or not funding. And, and in this case, um, I just did some quick math, 22% uh, of the funds, so 15.5 million of almost $71 million um, is for um, ideas that legislators and or the governor had completely outside of the LCCMR process and probably doesn't conform to the statutes that require that these dollars in the Environmental uh, Trust Fund, ENRT or whatever we call it, um, uh, are to be used to supplement and not supplant our dollar. I mean, I think this is a clear case of, of supplanting um, given that we can cite you know, chapter and verse, you know, Senate file after Senate file of these proposals that came forward to go through the regular legislative process. And I just also want to note uh, for the record that we have an excess of $9 billion surplus. Um, and so we have the resources uh, to fund these initiatives, all which, uh, all of which I think most, I think I'm for all of them. Maybe there's one or two I'm not crazy about, but uh, Senator Westrom did a nice job of touting the virtues of the benefits to our environment and our waters and our public health, et cetera. 
all worthwhile projects, but probably not um, anything that would even make it through the LCCMR process because clearly it's just a failure on the part of the majority party here to give you, Mr. Chair, for which I am very sympathetic and I will do what I can to help you get a better target. <laughs> I think we got 1 million bucks and that was for an initiative over the Tourism Bureau that they didn't even really want. So, um, so um, Mr. Chair, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I also want to say that, um, you know, if the legislature, if this is the future of LCCMR and, and this trust fund, um, you know, we should maybe treat it more like the bonding bill and, you know, and, and maybe give members like ourselves more time to look at a proposal, a package like this, you know, um, maybe, I, maybe there's other things on this list that we thought were better ideas and would want to try some, uh, you know, an amendment markup uh, and negotiation process so we could have some more legislative fingerprints on a bill like this. That's my piece, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. And and uh, yes, generally, uh, over at least the years that I've been here, we've been able to come up with a better consensus. Uh, over the last three, there seems to be uh, less of that, if you will, and for whatever reason. And and I think it's just a philosophical belief in different different ways of going towards spending these dollars. And and I think that's reflected. In this in this bill, and, and I think this is a good bill moving forward. And of course, you know this isn't the final stop. It it, it does go from here to the floor, and uh, uh, after a conference committee, so you have an op ample opportunity to to amend there uh, as well. So, um, any further comments, members? Any questions? I'm sorry, it goes to finance first. So it does have an opportunity there. I just came from finance. So I just thought it was just gonna let that one go right on by, but it does go to finance. Seeing no further discussion, uh, Senator Rester Westrom, do you have any final? Mr. 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 Chair, I would just might like to make a few brief comments uh, responding to uh, Senator Dibble. Um, I think I think you, you uh, recapped things very, very well. Uh, 70 projects are what came through the process, 78% of those dollars, as you uh, did the quick math. And, um, but, but it was a failure of the LCCMR's part to not come together. Uh, there was an abrupt adjournment to move by one of the co-chairs that got us, uh, you know, with the majority proposal that we had, but, but there is a lot of uh, discussion, uh, chatter about is there a way to improve the process or should it just come back to the legislature? Uh, again, uh, it's an advisory committee. So while it was a failure to get it done, it, there certainly was a lot of work. And uh, I want to also make sure that that language doesn't convert to the staff because the staff is only able to do so much. And so uh, with Director Nash here, I, I don't want her to be feeling like it was a failure because she couldn't do anything more. We are 17 members on the commission that have uh, independent minds to think, constituent groups uh, all that we all work with, 10 of us legislators with districts that we represent along with colleagues in the legislature that we know uh, their interest in, in uh, areas that we've worked with because of our work as legislators. And so I wanna just make that clear for the record, the staff, can't control and, and nor should they. they they do their job they get everything ready uh, we they present it with us everybody has different vantage points they're working on and so the failure of the commission to come together i don't think is necessarily all bad it's just a process and so it's narrowed down it's winnowed down uh, over 200 projects otherwise down to at least 70 that are in this bill and uh, the staff has done what they can. Uh, they are not paid to uh, take positions or advocate one way or the other. They're there to help administrate and to follow through with the process. And so I want to leave us with, you know, that not a doom and gloom. Uh, the governor's calling me, but I'll let him <laughs> go to voicemail. But uh, I'm kidding. But uh, anyways, just just so everybody knows, I mean, this is part of the process. The legislative process many times has talked about making sausage. And, 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 you know, it's the worst form of, of, of democracy is the worst form of government. 
as Churchill once said, but it's better than all the rest. And so uh, let's keep that in mind. Um, but Senator Dibble, I appreciate your comments. Uh, happy to work with you on, on, on this. There's a lot of in, in exciting projects in here. There's ATV trails uh, as, as somebody with a son who's just getting into uh, snowmobiling and, and, and ATVing. Uh, I see you know, firsthand how it, my kids enjoy this great outdoors, what we can fund. And when we can make these uh, trails and opportunities for families, for uh, youth to get out and enjoy safely uh, the environment uh, in riding ATVs or snowmobiles or things that are made right here in Minnesota, uh, there is a lot of reasons to be enthusiastic and excited about what this environmental trust fund uh, continues to offer our citizens and uh, what we can study, but what we can also put on the ground and enhance, improve, protect the great outdoors and the great outdoor experience in our state. And so with that, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, Senator Wistrom, Wibble, I'm sorry, that, that's, that's uh, your final statement, I'm sure, but it's... Uh my fault that I missed Senator Eaton. So she had a question real quickly. Oh, very good. Well, Mr. Senator Chair, thank you. I really didn't have a question as much as I had a uh, concern that over um, the uh, this bill from the delete amendment, three over $3 million has been cut from pollinator concerns and um, over a million dollars has been cut from the scientific and natural um, areas. So those are pretty important areas as far as I'm concerned. And, and I was, I'm just dismayed to see those cuts. Okay. Thank you. Members, uh, any more discussion? The roll call is requested. Roll call granted. Senator Westrom, I think your final statements yep. pretty much handled it. Uh, so with that, um, we've prepared to move the, uh, move the bill, Senate file 4043 as amended, Senator, I'm sorry, did I say that? Yeah, 4043 as amended, uh, Senator Lang moves. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? We guess we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a, I'm sorry, a roll call. So call the roll, please. Chair Angerbrinson? Yes. Vice Chair Rood? Senator Torres Ray? No. Senator Dibble? No. Senator Eaton? No. Sorry. Senator Eichhorn? Aye. Senator Lang? Aye. Senator Tomasoni? Tomasoni votes yes. Vice Chair Rood? No. On a vote of four yes and four no's, um, the um, 4043 as amended uh, fails with a tie. Members, I'm gonna call a short recess um, for about five minutes.
call the uh, Environmental Natural Resources Finance Committee back to order. Um, members, uh, where it stands right now is we're going to be uh, we're going to be in recess to the uh, call of the chair. Okay. Thank you all. Stay tuned. <laughs>